Hi, guys. Welcome to the Chelsea Skidmore Show. I'm here today with my guest, writer and director, Jackson Stewart. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for coming. We were just discussing kind of the horror world. Jax, is this like gross already? No, not at oh all. Oh my god, you made a cringe face. I'm <laughs> I did such... not make it. I made a. You I made did. a smiley face. I okay, <laughs> and like, is the horror world world like? I can't even say it. First of all, I'm like, I'm so new to like the nerding out of all of this, and I can't even do it, which is what we were just talking about. Wait, I mean, you don't need to. Are you? It's... An... <laughs> It's not going to help you in any way. We were shape, just or talking about the horror world. You're like, <laughs> I want to go. I'm so like, don't no, me. not at all, not at all. No, that's it's refreshing. I'm, 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 I'm glad to not be dorking out about that. I want to, but uh, well, I can't. Well, we can't. Is there a term for like people who <laughs> like me? Is there a horror poser? No. What I about mean, like trying? <laughs> No, if you, I mean, if you, if you like it, I think whatever, you know, your lexicon of that stuff is, is fine. You know, I mean, it's like if you've seen 10 horror movies mm -hmm. and you decide that you're a horror fan, mm -hmm. that's, that's fine. You know, okay. I mean, it's like, you don't have to have seen everything ever made. Like that's ridiculous. Yeah. Cause there's so much that I'm, I'm beginning to learn all of this stuff from our mutual friend. Yeah. Todd Lincoln. Shout out to Todd. <laughs> um... <laughs> And I just, yeah, there's so much of all this in this whole world, and there's so many little like sub parts. I sub feel genres. Like. It's just or like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's never yeah. ending. And, um, and yeah, like for me, like growing up, like, you know, I'd go to the video store and be getting like Leprechaun. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the movie Scream in theaters, but that's Whoa. like. I had that on VHS. On really? Like a, yeah, I had the Drew Barrymore cover. Oh, she was on the cover. Well, they had like, or her with they the did, phone. Oh, yeah, so they had three different. I think they were like the widescreen VHS, which was very fancy at the time. But there was the Nev Campbell cover, the Courtney Cox cover, and then the Drew Barrymore cover. Ooh, collectors' covers. Yes, yeah, because that that scream made a uh, a lot of money, and they were like, you know where we can make more money? Different yeah. covers on VHS. But I was like basic. I mean, that's With not really. Choices. I don't think that's. I basic. love Scream. Leprechaun's pretty obscure. And Leprechaun, when he's like, "Yeah, I'm doing it to the camera. The camera's right there." <laughs> oh, cool! <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know we were filming. What'd you think the light was for? Just <laughs> your glamour shots. <laughs> just for you, just for my guests to look at me in a better light. <laughs> yeah. Imagine. I, I, I mean. It's it it's it would be pretty dark in here without it, you know. Yeah. So I'm literally and I'm I'm jumping around all the time. So Please I'm do. Uh, you know, I was just informed about Barbara Crampton. Yeah. So does that mean <laughs> the blonde Drew Barrymore hair? Do you think that was like a nod to her vibe? Cuz it was like the same hair cuz I noticed that today when I was looking. Yeah, so she well, it was a little weird cuz she actually like cut her hair when we were doing like some pickup shots so it kind of changes which not oh, like notice. no one's like ever picked that out which is very weird but yeah I mean it was more you know uh, a happy coincidence I think than like a deliberate directorial choice you know yeah but yeah she's she's a real wild woman yeah, so growing up, and we're again, we're going to be jumping all over the place. Growing up, what were like the kind of horror movies that you were watching, and was that what you were grabbing for on the shelves at the video store? I mean, I, my first horror, I mean, my first like quasi horror movie, I think, was Marnie, the Alfred Hitchcock movie. Oh, okay. And I mean, that's more of like a thriller, but there was like one scene where, you know, she kills this guy. With like a fire poker, and there's like this like bright red blood all over his white shirt, and it scared the fucking <laughs> shit out of me. And I, I was like, I think I was like six or seven at the time, and I used to just be so afraid of horror movies. Where it's like, I I think I saw Nightmare on Elm Street four when I was like nine, and I had nightmares about it for like a year, and I just like couldn't get it out of my head. And so I I very like consciously stayed away from horror movies, and oh. I, I was like. I can't watch these. They freak me out too much. And then I think when I was like 11 or 12, I started going to the comic book shop that was, you know, kind of nearby. And then 
I got really into that. And then one of the guys there was like, I was like, what movies should I check out? And they were like, oh, you should check out Escape from New York and, you know, Evil Dead 2 and these other ones. And I was like, oh, well, like Evil Dead 2 is a horror movie. And they're like, yeah, but like you can handle it. And so I watched that and I was like, this is like the best movie I've ever seen in my life. And I was totally in love with it. And then from there, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to like watch every single one of these. Mm -hmm. And so basically from like 12 to... 15 i just like went through like my entire like video store catalog and rented everything made from like 1967 up until like 1989 i like just like whatever it was like shitty cover you know whether it was like blood rage or like you know god told me to or um you know reanimator or Return of the Living Dead 3 or just whatever it was I was I just like went completely into it and um and then I was like totally in love with it and that kind of turned into me having like a love for like more um quote unquote respectable cinema like the you know Arthur Penn movies and Scorsese's and you know Hitchcock and um like Michael Powell and you know all these great filmmakers but yeah it kind of like it was kind of like my gateway drug into other movies, basically. Yeah. So were you watching these with a friend of yours or by yourself? Kind of both. I used to, like, hijack these movie nights we'd have at uh, a friend's house. And they were, <laughs> like, literally every week, They there was, a there was like, a two-for-one deal. So we'd rent, like, four horror movies. And I would, I'd be like, oh, we're just going to watch, like, only horror movies made from like 1975 until you know 80 whatever 89 it's interesting that you talked <laughs> about the year yeah like that you were focused on yeah it was like the time it was like it was like very how did you have that thought at a young age i just like really loved the aesthetic okay. i love that they kind of like I love that they approached those movies with sincerity where like they didn't treat it as a joke. And I, I mean, interestingly too, Scream was one of my kind of like gateway horror movies. And then, you know, I saw like the clip from Halloween and that, and you know, they talked about like Slumber Party Massacre and a lot of these. And so it's like, oh, I'm going to go and see all of these, you know? Yeah. And so, and then from there, it's like, there's such a galaxy of this stuff that you can kind of go into. Um, but yeah, I don't know what it was. It was like that period I just was like super in love with. And I'm reflecting on my own, you know, rental history growing up. And now I'm realizing all we watched was like those, well, for me, more mainstream commercial. Is that like what the I, term is? I mean, I. But I that's suppose. all we but rented. Like, oh, well, like Candyman, I mean, Carrie. Yeah, like, but stuff I mean, those like are that. still, even though. Th it's Is like, I don't know how, like, quote unquote, mainstream those are. Okay. Because Candyman is still a little, I mean, even though it's like they made three of them or whatever, but it's like, if we go and like walk down Sunset right now and ask 20 people if they've seen Candyman, like, <laughs> most of them are probably going to say no. Uh huh. And if we go and okay, ask good. them if they've one. seen Avengers, <laughs> you know, and I've never seen that. I haven't either. I actually, <laughs> I walked out of it, but <laughs> it's, um, you know, probably everyone would say yes to that. Yeah. So I I mean, I still think even though it's it's like they're kind of um, maybe it's not the deepest cut. It's still like more obscure than a lot of other stuff, you know? Yeah. How, so how did you notice um, horror movies changed like from the different? Well, I think like the biggest there, there's a lot of like big kind of like watermarks between each of them. So, I, you know, that period I really loved from like, you know, the late 60s up until kind of the mid 80s. It's like they were all very sincere, very authentic. Like there was like real peril in them. And then after kind of the 85 mark, not all of them, but a lot of them became a little more cornier. Well, it was like they were more like self-conscious and they were kind of like making fun of them you know i mean it was like they were, they were a little more tongue-in-cheek okay and that was like a big disconnect like for me. satir like satirical yeah you know and i mean it was like and i i do like a lot of the movies that kind of 
satirize the the horror genre, but there was stuff like, you know, there was a, a pretty b- popular entry in one of the Friday the Thirteenth movies where it becomes mu- like a joke, basically, where it's like you, j- it's kind of just made for like the audience to make fun of, and I really disliked that. Mm. And I, 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 I like, I, no, this is <laughs> yeah, because I mean, it's just it's not. Those are my friends. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's like you just. It's like I like it when they treat the material with respect, and anytime someone's just trying to like turn it into a joke, it just kind of, it just kind of like loses something because it's like okay, you're not better than this, you mm-hmm. know. And, and so it, I don't know if I'm if I'm articulating this properly. But it's like do it confidently. Yeah, exactly. It's like just own it. Like, yeah. Just like you want to like, do that, then do it. You don't have totally. to like make it like we You're know we're like, doing. Oh, this. we know Jason's stupid or what? And it's like yeah. no, Jason's not stupid. He's like made a fucking bit a billion dollars. So that's what you mean by <laughs> an example of how it became self conscious. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, and and not all of them did that, but it was like. That was a big kind of like tipping point where they're like, oh, we can't set Friday the 13th movies at camp anymore. You know, where you're like, well, that's why. Like, yeah. that people just want to see that. And then kind of in like the n- mid 90s, I think Scream spawned like a lot of kind of like bad imitators, you know, where they were like very, I don't know. It, it, it's like they, they kind of got into this like meta realm where they're like, oh, all horror movies are dumb and we we know that and we're just going to point out how dumb they are. Mm-hmm. Scream, I don't think, does that. Is that like with the whole rules yeah, idea? Yeah, I mean, well, it's like, you know, I mean, I, I probably shouldn't say this, but it's like. Oh, um, come on. <laughs> <laughs> like there's, you know. Uh, Wes Craven's not coming for you. Yeah, well. He's, is he? I mean, he's. He's dead. Oh, <laughs> he is? Okay. Do you want to just leave at this point? <laughs> no, no, no. I- I'm sorry. I just want to make an apology to Maybe anyone listening good. to you. Is he dead? Yeah, he, he died in like, I think 2014. <laughs> I wish he wasn't wearing a leopard shirt. It just makes it worse. I'm, no, you're, you're totally, you're totally in the clear. conscious 80s. Yeah. Girl. No, I mean, it was like, you know, I... I like they, I know what you did last summer. Movies yes. And stuff. See, I loved then, those. I mean, I I liked the first one at the time, but I think in like retrospect, they're a little like kind of dismissive of. I know, like I'm not trying to like talk you out of like if you no, like you're that, not. that's great. You know, like, but like there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Wait, keep going. I'm trying to learn. But yeah, so, <laughs> so I mean, there's me, like actually. there was there was that kind of phase where it was just like you know, very, you know, dismissive and sort of Wait, like so what do you mean dismissive? Like, there was, like, they would look at, you know, a movie like My Bloody Valentine and be like, oh, look at all the dumb horror tropes in this. Okay. Like, we're much smarter than this because we pointed out this or, like, this subtext or, like, these kind of thematic ideas. And they would call attention to those and then just use that as a way to kind of, like, shit on the movie in a sense or like these movies of a certain era which i guess i'm in a weird way i'm doing now but um yeah i I mean there was that and then you know there was kind of like the early to mid 2000s like horror remake craze where they were just grabbing like every property you vaguely heard of and yeah remaking that and like a super serious you know way (laughs) how do you feel about Ma- the remakes today like it i liked it actually chucky I, uh, chucky I i enjoyed i mean it was a it, it it's a little weird because the the more recent ones i felt like had more of a like an affinity for it because it's you know it's generally like people around our age mm-hmm. who grew up like loving those movies are the ones that are now making them versus you know uh-huh. 10 to 15 years ago there were people who were like huge music video directors that didn't really like those movies that were, you know, kind of getting put in charge of remaking them. It oh, seemed like. I, didn't, and, I don't even know any of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it was like, there's a lot of, you know, like the guy who directed, um, what is that? Uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit. He directed the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Oh. And it was like, you know, it, you get the sense he's probably not the hugest Nightmare on Elm Street fan from that movie. Or, you know, from whatever it might be. But, yeah, there were a lot more, like, 
odd hiring choices back then. But I mean, there were all, there were some really great ones that were made during that period too, like the Dawn of the Dead remake. I think is really good. Um, the Hills Have Eyes remake is incredible, like maybe better than the original. Um, but yeah, it's like there there's just these sort of like phases of it, and then you know the found footage thing became like pretty big for a while, like Blair Witch. Yeah, well, Blair Witch and is like, that found footage? I mean, that it is. Yeah, okay. I mean, like that's kind of the first one. It's kind of the OG. And then paranormal. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, like the paranormal activity craze. You know, where it was like they they were making like a ton of those. Like there was that like space found footage movie, and then all these like devil themed found footage Ooh. movies. And yeah, I mean, you, you like <laughs> devil found. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't. I can't remember what that. What the hell was that called? I don't know. I mean, a, a lot of these, it's like they just kind of like vaporized like the weekend they came out. But do you get scared after watching a horror movie? Um, occasionally, very rarely. Like, which what scares you? The the recent one that scared me was Hereditary. Oh, me too. Did yeah? It was <laughs> that. It was so fucking upset. I, really. I saw it during the day and I got home and I was by myself in my apartment and yeah. I was I was I was looking around. Yeah, well like when <laughs> when that shit just like floats behind him I was like fuck this. I yeah. was like oh my god dude. Like that's a that's like a hardcore PTSD movie. It was it was really good. Yeah. Really good and I feel like I hadn't seen something like that in a long time. Yeah, well, I mean, it's they pulled some like a few kind of like set piece things from Exorcist Three, which you know was sort of interesting. <laughs> but um, it's like super well made. It's like I don't know how anyone could watch that movie and not like it. Like it, it's just incredibly well done. Did but, you see Midsummer? I did. Yeah, I, I haven't seen it yet. It's on my list, but I know I it's out it. on video. I think you'll. Or, uh, I, I think you'll you dig know, it on, on Amazon yeah, Prime yeah, yeah. or whatever. Or uh vod or yeah yeah you should uh, check it out yeah i will yeah, the conjuring is that the clapping one yes that one <laughs> that one scared the shit out of me yeah it was pretty scary i saw that one in the theater and like yeah there's something about seeing it in the theater yeah. that's like ah. yeah no definitely <laughs> i mean i'm trying to think of that was definitely scary in the theater there were I don't know what else I've seen like recently in like what horror movies I've seen recently that like got me. When I was younger, probably like eight, I saw birds. Oh, yeah. And I'm terrified of birds too today. Oh, weird. My, it, my mom is also terrified. terrified. Of birds. <laughs> I just hate them. And it ruined clowns for me. Yeah. I think it did a lot of people. <laughs> Chucky ruined dolls for me. Yeah, but those are all scary things. Like, are you are you scared of clowns or dolls or any um, spiders? And no, the things that I, I mean, not not like any any like real way. I'm more like afraid of like like creepy people. You know, Ooh. where they're like they'll just like it's like just some, you come across like some weirdo and they just like like on the you street. Or, yeah, like that kind of stuff. I think. Like, did you see the strangers? I don't think so. That's one I thought was really upsetting and scary because it's basically just they knock on their their door and then they decide to like just terrorize them and like ruin their lives. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of like, like us, yeah, um, in a way, but not really. No, I mean, it's more. It, it's like the setup is kind of similar, but it's much more of like a. It's almost more of like a kind of like Manson esque. Okay. Ask thing. Um, you'd have to watch it, but it's it's like a really. I'm gonna have to get a list movie. of you. Yeah, I'll I'll hook you, you up after the show. Yeah. Um. So growing up, then, uh, was the video store like your spot? Because I know yeah. you know. Well, first yeah, of all, we haven't so. even talked about your movie, <laughs> Beyond the Gates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which kind of starts in in take, a video in store. a video store. So yeah. I felt like that was like a special thing for you. Yeah, I mean, a lot of that was just, you know, I mean, it's like there's a really good kind of like metaphor for, you know, your like nostalgia there with this like yes. place you have. I miss that. It made me yeah. miss that. It made me want to walk around inside of one. Yeah, and like they're pretty much all gone at this point. I went to a really cool one in Ventura. Oh, yeah. What's it called? 
Um, I don't know, but I have the picture. I have pictures in my phone. I took tons of pictures around. Oh, nice. Because like just seeing the sections by type, it just felt special. Yeah. And, and I just, yeah, I just. I always like to go in one when I see one, and I very rarely see one, but... Yeah, there's it, still a few... But you want to park and go inside. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you We know, pulled over when we saw it, and it had like a big neon sign outside. It was really, really cool. Oh, rad. Yeah. I wonder... I'm curious what it was. It was though. two levels. Damn. Wow. Yeah, it was very cool. Yeah, because there's... I mean, I know there are... There's, you know, Eddie Brandt's is still open. That's where we shot my movie. And then, where was that? Uh, that's in North Hollywood. Oh, it's like okay. off of um, Lancashire, I think. Do you have a membership there? Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, I, I still, I still go in. Yeah, because a lot of stuff, people, whenever I get film recommendations, I'm like, where are you guys watching these? So they must be going to movie rental stores. Yeah, I mean, there's still, it's like they're. they're there's so many things that are just like all over the place, but a lot of the stuff they have, like some of it's like literally never been put on home video, you know where I mean? It's like, you can't even like get, it's like, it didn't even come out on VHS much like forget streaming or any of that stuff. It's like, you just can't find it. And they would have like, you know, Eddie Brandt specifically has like a deal with a bunch of the movie studios where they would kind of like get um like, prints or copies or whatever of these movies that weren't released and they like rent them to their customers for free and with another like movie that's so cool i know it's like a great idea okay, i have to go there yeah because there's so many things i want to yeah yeah it's i mean like, i can't it's an find wild at watch. heart anywhere and i really want to watch that oh movie. really i know they yeah just, i think they just put it out on um like scream fat or shout factory or something like see i don't even know what that is oh see they like they put out like a bunch uh like a ton of like great cult movies and stuff and it's a website yeah well you can get it uh i mean it's like a label but there's a website for it and yeah like that they have a ton of stuff that you would love on there and what's it called again shout factory see it's like i don't know about this (laughs) well you do now thank you you're welcome um but yeah i mean i i definitely had an affinity for that stuff when I was younger and you know I mean and I still do it's like I'm I'm definitely still you know do you still feel that. like a little boy when you walk by the porn section and it's like <laughs> in those two double doors and you're just like I could go in there now uh, you know what I mean I, it's like the curtain <laughs> and you're just like what's yeah, in there you, you still feel like you'll, you'll get in trouble like if you like <laughs> right? go in. I like I'm like oh, I better not go in I'm like I'm 34 years old <laughs> <laughs> it's like no one cares if i'm going in there i know i always feel i always feel that way when i find a video store and go and i'm like no i can go in there now <laughs> yeah it's still feel it's and it's then like i just a feel weird... like naughty i'm like i don't want anyone yeah, to see totally. me in here yeah like you it's feel weird. like you're gonna get in trouble it's <laughs> which so i love weird. but yeah yeah i mean who doesn't but it's <laughs> it's a that's an interesting one i never i did not think of that until you just mentioned really it. yeah well i mean it's because it was just, it was like so forbidden. Like, I think I snuck into the porn section we all when did. I was like eight or nine. And I was just like, I, I was like, I'm going to jail if they catch me. But <laughs> me there. personally, like when I look at those covers, like I don't know what to do with that. Like, I just yeah. want to look at one and then put it down. And like, I never pick up more than like two covers. Yeah, you're like, you're <laughs> like, what is this woman doing? And you're like, oh God. It's just I- too much. I don't know. Yeah. It's very, it's like very aggressive. I know I'm a girl, so it's probably <laughs> different for guys, but like picking up, I don't know. There's something like too intimidating about a porn cover. Like when you look at porn online, <laughs> it's like a whole different thing. But the cover, it's like, you wanted this. Here yeah, it is. Yeah, totally. Yeah, you're just like, you're like, this is what this you what bought. you wanted. Yeah, totally. And you're just like, oh, it's geez. like I, I, uh... you're like right in the middle of Thanksgiving dinner. Wow. <laughs> That's I don't know. There yeah, there's a weird that's a very odd deal there. I didn't I, I honestly I didn't now that you mention it <laughs> it's very strange. Right? Like, I mean it's like if if you tried to explain this to like a ten year old or something now, they'd be like, What? Yeah, like, fucking losers. Yeah. Fucking they, millennial ge- generation Z losers. <laughs> they would have no idea. They would just be like they I'm don't sure know they what just that's watch like. like porn on the you know, their like iPads or whatever, but yeah, they don't. They don't know the good old days. Yeah, where, of being afraid. Yeah, of just total fucking terror. 
So when you would watch these movies with your friends that you're renting or sometimes by yourself, and then they would leave and you'd be alone. Was I? Were you scared? Mm, not really. What? I mean, some of them, <laughs> occasionally like one of them, but it was like I was so scared at first from Nightmare on Elm Street 4 that I was just like, the most terrifying, like traumatizing thing I could ever imagine. And then from that, it was just like, everything was pretty much easy street. Cause it was, you like, broke yourself in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause I mean, it's like when you see something and it has like that huge of an impact on you, it's all sort of like downhill from, I mean, not in like downhill, like in a bad way, but I mean, like there's no point in my life where someone is going to make, is going to recreate that terrifying experience for me, like in adulthood. Like I, like you just don't get that. Like once you've kind of lived out and like taken the, you know, the punches of life, it's like you don't, oh. you don't get scared in the same way. I do. Really? Yes. I'm, I, I wish we could like switch <laughs> spots because that would be. Well, you probably miss being afraid for the first time. Yeah. It's like doing drugs over and over again, totally. trying to get the Big same time. effect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, like, that's like, where I am. Nothing scares me as much. Yeah. It's like I moved into, like, black tar heroin and stuff, <laughs> and it's like, barely feel anything. And, yeah. It's, that's a spot on analogy. Do you go to any of the, um, like, not scary farm, haunted hayride, um, mazes? I've gone to, like, a few, not, not in a long time. Do you get time. festive? Not really. I mean, like, really? I'll, I'll dress up a little bit. Like, if there's, like, a party or something, then I'll, like, you know, put on, like, a, uh, like my Marty McFly getup. So or you something. have a one go-to costume? I mean, I've got a, I have, like, that, and then I've got the kid from Halloween 3. And okay. that's pretty much it. <laughs> so, yeah, but the, the, it's, like, I just have, it's like every year I'm like, oh, I'm going to do something really cool for Halloween. And then I never do. It's, it's like the time rolls around and I'm like, oh, my laziness won again. Yeah. The older I get, like, I just, once you're there in a costume at a party, it's yeah. just kind of like, uh, now what? Like, yeah, totally. I feel like a fucking asshole. Yeah. And all these people, like, everyone. And what else I hate is that everyone it's like this energy of everyone wants so much attention. Yeah, big time. And everyone's so annoying. And it's the chance for people who aren't <laughs> extroverted, fun people to be like the worst. Yeah. <laughs> and they all take on like the character of their costume. Yeah. Wow. I'm I'm curious what parties you're you're going to. I'm going to one tonight. I'll send you the flyer. Yeah, please do. I'm it's a sci fi <laughs> themed party. Oh wow. Yeah. All right. She has fun parties, but like That's cool. but then it's like everyone's just like it's just like get the fuck out of my way. I know, right? Yeah. I mean, there's like the one I went to one at a director friends on Friday mm -hmm. and a buddy of mine dressed up as uh Morticia Adams. And his girlfriend went as Gomez. But he came out and we were like, is he supposed to be like Roseanne from that Halloween <laughs> episode? <laughs> <Or> like, <we've... laughs> Didn't quite pull it off. <laughs> yeah, it's like, there's like, there's a lot of, a lot of these costumes I feel like people just have to explain. Which uh, is also very weird where you're like. It's kind of a bummer. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like what are you trying to accomplish here? Yeah. <laughs> you're just like. You're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm this thing, and they're like, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what that is, and it's, they just feel foolish. You know? When you were okay, so where'd you grow up? Tucson, Arizona. Oh, okay. Yeah. When you were a kid, did you guys all meet in like one neighborhood and like beat each other with soap and a sock? Because that, because <laughs> that no. was like a huge <laughs> thing where I grew up. And if I could just tell you what we did, and you can tell me if you guys did this. <laughs> <laughs> but there was this like um like a cookie what are they called like uh like the cookie cutter like what are the co like yeah what are those called wait like starts with the, the c not like com complex maybe i don't know i'm not sure what a it, it's what it, like what does like, it do no like the homes a bunch of cookie cutter home complexes or like oh you mean like the um what are not those? like the townhouses or Kind of, but like, you know, if there's like a certain like area that's like this whole area is field point. 
And oh. it's like a complex with like tons of oh, houses. Oh, like the like the. I feel like there's a better. I mean, I'm trying to. Th- I I think I know what you mean, but it's like the. Like towns have like a certain little like this is all, they all look the same. But yeah, yeah, you like suburbia. Know. Yeah, like cookie cutter stuff. shit. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> there's this area called Field Point, and like everyone yeah. meets at Field Point at like the top of this hill, and we're all in high school and middle school, and everyone gets soap on in a sock. And then we get, you know, we get the spray paint and we, you put a needle in like the hole and then you burn it. So it's really like sharp. And then you oh, all, wow. so we all meet there and we all beat the shit out of each other and spray each other with spray shaving cream. Oh, this is like some full metal other. jacket shit. And I'm, I'm starting to realize no <laughs> other town like... I know did this. Yeah, we beat like... each other. Wow. I it mean, was crazy. I think we had some, we had some like kind of. Uh, th- th- this would be like extremely unwoke by today's standards. Who gives but, a fuck? <laughs> but we were like, they there was like a game the kids at school played called Smear the Queer. Do you know about this? <laughs> no. <laughs> so yeah, it was like, I mean, this was probably an Arizona thing, but it would it would just be like they would like tackle whoever the person was. Yeah, and... but is this around Halloween or is this a different? No, that game? was just like a like a year round. <laughs> <laughs> but it was oh still God. like. But I, I, like, wait, what I did they about smear? Few, it's called smear the queer. So they would find the, and but I mean, it was it was just like anyone. It didn't really oh, like matter. Oh, okay. But so I mean, like, like an unusual student, like queer. No, it strange. wasn't even that. It was just like anyone. It would just be like my friend Dunny or whatever. Dunny. Like, yeah, there was like I'd, Dunny? I that was like one of our friends or like this guy was that Rob a nickname? Or something. Yeah, it was. It was short for Daniel. I don't. It was very weird. I I don't know what the deal was, but. Yeah, it's like I don't think we connected that as like a like a like a gay slur. At the yeah, time, yeah, which yeah. is also like we, like we didn't. I don't. I don't know what the. It's a very different time. It's like there's a lot yeah. of stuff like over the past twenty years that's like super shocking now. Where I'm like, wow, I can't believe like that was just like that just happened like all the time. Yeah, that would be a news article today and like a yeah. whole thing. Like I'm probably going to get canceled just for saying that on your podcast, but well, it was still It wasn't about homosexual. No, but I mean kids. it was just like It was the term they used. Yeah, it, it, but it's <laughs> We're just, backing up. Yeah, no. it's just so it's so weird. Like but yeah, it's like just beating the shit out of each other with like bars of soap. You did, and in stuff. a sock? No, but I, I was using your example. You yeah. Know? But I, I mean, it's like, I remember we would like punch each other and stuff like that kind of, I mean, it was just like real, you know, dumb meathead shit that I, I think was kind of commonplace at the time. Were you a jock meathead shit? No. I mean, it was, it was more like, I, I, I'm a jock, but I like scary movies. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, I think it was it was just like there was just nothing to do then. Yeah, what what what's <laughs> so, on like? I mean, it was like just you have no phones or anything at the time. It's like you'd maybe Did you like, have a Nextel in high school? Um, I don't I didn't even have a phone in high school. Okay. Like it at, like I had I think I got a phone when I was like 19 maybe. And but yeah, like we didn't and then there was like all that shitty texting you would do. Where yeah, you would, like, when you have to press one each yeah, like key six for times, like yeah. you know, to get like a <laughs> that's a like Nokia a or what? <laughs> yeah, like we had that, and then um, I don't. But I mean, it's like you just didn't have anything. Like you'd have your like Game Boy that you could like power on for two hours before like the batteries would be all drained, and then you maybe have like a book or something you could read at school, and that's it. And yeah. it's like you didn't have anything. There was We're, like no entertainment to go to. Yeah, yeah, trees. Yeah, to it's climb like you had like and... trees and like the playground, and like that's it. You know, what I mean, at least when you're a little kid. I know? remember I'd say I'm playing Buffy after yeah. Buffy the Vampire, <laughs> and I'd walk around my neighborhood by myself, kicking trees and pretending they're vampires. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's like you'd do that with like you know Batman or whatever. But yeah, it was it was al- <laughs> it was just so. After me and my friends saw the craft, we all wanted to be witches. So I brought them into the woods (laughs) and I poked my finger with a needle. Oh, my God. And I was like, now you guys poke your finger with a needle. And And we all touch blood. And they're like, we don't want to get AIDS, Chelsea. And I was like, so they thought you got AIDS. So I was just like, there was my like finger. And I was like, "Uh, okay. I don't know. 
I mean, it's um, yeah, there was a lot of, I'm um, yeah, there, people were like real traitors back then. Did you run a- traitors? Okay, it sounds like you still have a resentment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm sh- I'm sure I do somewhere, but yeah, uh, I mean, it's like uh, you'll be sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. But um, yeah, there was just a lot of stuff like that. With did you other- run away from home? Oh, of course, yeah. Where'd you go? Like you, you would just track? like go like hide in the desert or something. So you, know, you were but... in the desert. Yeah, yeah. It was like I don't think I've been to Tucson. I mean, it's... but I'm going to Tempe in February. Oh, <laughs> what are you doing there? I'm performing at the Improv. Oh, nice. Featuring for Joey Diaz at the Tempe Improv Valentine's Day. Be there. I per- I know who that is. Yeah, he's a very famous comedian. Yeah, he's great. That's cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's uh. They, I mean, that's like Joshua Tree or something. Oh. Okay. Cool. Where it's like there's just a lot of a lot of dirt and you know, mesquite trees and that kind of thing. So did you go to film school? No, I never. I mean, I basically just like read every book I could get my hands on, watched like everything I I could as far as like making of stuff, and then just watched like an ungodly amount of movies where like basically before I moved out here I was like I need to like see everything and so I'd be like I'm gonna watch you know every Don Siegel movie ever made so I'd go because like I loved you know Dirty Harry for instance so I'd go and like watch his first movie and then everything he ever made for like you know 50 years or something wow and I would do that with like every director what was I could think of that's I love that. It, yeah, it was like, it, but then like when I moved here, like no one did. That. <laughs> really? I was like, I'm I'm here. I hear about. I meet people who do stuff like that, and I'm always jealous. Well, like Todd Lincoln would do that. Yeah. You know, I mean, like Todd is like one of those where it's like, okay, we both seen you know Save the Tiger with Jack Lemon, or just you know like Ace in the Hole, or you know some of these like. Well, he's obscure. like, look up mo- other movies with the word beyond in it, including yeah. Beyond the Horror Film from Italy. I was like, what? <laughs> That's why I was like, there's too many. Yeah, there's like too beyond many. The door I'm not gonna see all like, of these. Yeah. When did you see all of these? I mean, they were all from kind of like the early 2000s, and I mean, I still just like try to find obscure shit. You know, like I started watching this movie yesterday called The Witch in Love, which is this like. Hmm. Italian like black and white kind of like marriage comedy from like the 60s that my friend Anna Biller lent to me and I was like oh cool like this sounds super weird are European horror movies different from American horror movies oh, totally what's the difference well I mean <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's quite a few too broad but, I'm sorry. yeah but I mean it's like if anything stands out you know I mean well like a good instant a good example of that would be like the original Dawn of the Dead you know, so there is the there's like the the U.S. cut or like there's the theatrical cut. There's a slightly extended cut. And then there's like the European cut. Do you see all cuts? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it, depending it, like if it's a movie I like, definitely. But if it's, you know, something I, I'm not that into, probably not. But, um, you know, like the Dario Argento cut, who, you know, he's you or I'm sure are familiar with him. He directed Suspiria. He's like a you know a huge um, director in Italy. He did his own cut of Dawn of the Dead because he was one of the producers there, and it's for like the Italian market basically. But that's like really kind of like dense and filled with like a lot of dialogue, and he, they take out some of the cooler scenes in it like the bit when the uh, have you seen the original dawn of the dead yeah but a long long time okay so like you know when the guy stands up and gets his head chopped off by the helicopter blade like the zombie all right well whatever i saw it like in middle school or high school uh, yeah so there's that scene and in the argento cut like that's not there but they replace it with like a bunch of talk about like you know, Fran getting an abortion and stuff. And huh, it's like, okay. and then like they're kind of like marital problems and like just weird. Yeah. Cause there's all these rules overseas with certain things, right? Well, not necessarily. It's just I'm like classier. So, some it's era- less gory. So less gory, maybe? Sort of. But I mean, it's also like the Italians, 
or, or like super gory and a lot. Like, I mean, like they're like excessively gory and and which is what I like. Yeah. And when so, you got to the gore in your movie, I was like, <laughs> ha ha, it's starting. You know, <laughs> like there's like a little. Isn't there a little excitement when things start getting messy? Yeah, absolutely. I like it. Get it. It's like a thing inside. You're like, yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, totally. And I'm no, like, I, I like I I love that, and I, I mean like. A big part of like why I wanted to do that was because I wanted to be like really like shocked. I it did you know? shock me because it was a little bit of like I I didn't expect it coming totally because it yeah. was like it was like starting off kind of like chill in a way yeah like backstory yeah like, yeah it's like it's a little more like kind of taking its time and no, it's like more of like a like a spooky haunted house movie right and then there's just this you know like crazy explosion of gore that you don't really see which was so fun and it's like i i felt my face change i took a picture on my story and i said just watch the gory moment in a horror movie because my face was like and it's like i felt you know when you feel your face change and you're like what do i look like right now (laughs) it's like that scene in hereditary when she's you know watching the guy get set on fire and then she's like dude when her head chops off oh god it's so it was like what I know. When he, for me, when he, it's like those things when you start yelling at a movie by yourself. When when he goes back inside after her head is chopped off, you're like, you're just going to leave her body in there? I get it. You're in shock. But it's like the stuff that rails me up, like... I don't, I just love getting like that. There's something inside you that just gets you like excited and just yeah. I you know absolutely I just, like I you get that, that like, emotional change. Yeah, you get like that charge like out of you know. Like, yeah, I mean that's that's a big draw of it, you know, and like not to get too into my own personal history, but it's like you know drinking was a lot like yeah. that when I did that, where it's like oh I get this like huge rush and you know and then it like. You get like a big spike of something and then a bunch of horrible stuff would happen afterward. Yeah. But we don't really need to get into that. But yeah, like yeah. horror movies have kind of a similar kind of like just shot of adrenaline that you get that kind of like, you know, pulls something out of you in the way that like a drama doesn't usually do. Yes. I I was watching that. Do you know about that? Uh, fuck. That guy... Uh, it's like push or something that on Netflix, the psycho, the psycho like guy who, fuck, I don't know what it's called, what the term is called, but it's this guy in England. I think it's almost like a punked, but it's a guy who like makes people do things. I'm, oh, do like you, he like manipulates them. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. I don't I know don't why. Know. I'm, I'm not sure what the, a little, I'm feeling a little slow right now, but, right. um, yeah, yeah, I just watch. It's like this hour long thing of um, basically they're trying to manipulate someone through an earpiece, essentially with all these actors around them to push someone off a building. Oh yeah, and it's like I couldn't breathe the entire because yeah, it's no, like that shit's real. Disturbing. Getting people to be compliant. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Just, I mean, a lot of that. It's scary, like how easy that stuff can happen. Because. Mm-hmm. There's so many of these things where you're just like, I would never do that. And then it's like, uh, I got some bad news for you. <laughs> like, you probably would, you know, like under the right set of circumstances. And it's really the, like very disturbing. Yeah. But it's like that whole idea of like walking into the porn room when you can't. It's like yeah. that creepy, like I'm sitting in on this, like, and it's like sickening. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Where it's just, it's like you just feel dirty afterward or something you know You're like oh i shouldn't be doing this but i can't stop yeah exactly <laughs> exactly You're do you like, have a favorite movie snack a snack <laughs> um like do you I don't know like, like sour do you have a... patch kids or something maybe <laughs> but do you like do you get that exciting feeling when you're about to sit down and watch something and you yeah, like you're do... like oh i'm gonna get my snack yeah for sure <laughs> well i mean like i went and saw i saw joker like you know, by myself. Yeah. Uh, at a theater, I love seeing which, movies by myself. Absolutely. It's, um, but yeah, I just, I totally like went on a whim and I was like, oh wow, it's like Friday night and it's not sold out. So fuck it, I'm going to go. And then, but yeah, like watching that, I was like, wow, this is like real, <laughs> like really, this is like too real. Mm, and some, mm-hmm. but I mean, in a good way where yeah. it's like, oh, this is like, uh, they've like really went all the way with it. Versus a lot of, 
a lot of the stuff I've seen, it's like you think they're going to go all the way and they don't. And mm -hmm. then it just kind of like, you're like, oh, okay, they just stopped here versus mm. like, oh, wow, they like really, really pushed that. In what way? Like I like mean, the whole mental illness way? That, you know, like they did that in like a very like authentic way. I loved that whole element yeah, of how too. they chose to make it how it, I mean, they really did a good job of showing why he did the things he did totally. and to make him a sympathetic character. I mean, yeah. all the stuff, all those like save the cat elements. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, and it's like they had that bit, you know, I mean, with him and like his his quote unquote dad where you're like, oh, his dad is just this like piece of shit who's like <sighs> punching him. And, so like, was that his bathroom. dad? Yeah, I mean, that's the implication okay. I, I got, is that, you know, they like his mom was mentally ill, and they covered that up, and that was the whole thing where you're just like, oh, God. That's like it. But that's that feels like something that would just happen. Yeah. You know, where it's like, oh, this, like, rich guy with a piece of shit, and then just, you know, totally cast this kid out, and, like, you know, he was, like, horribly abused and all this other stuff, and, like, you... Yeah, I mean, it's it's just you don't see a lot of movies kind of go into that level of detail mm -hmm. on that. So, Do you think that she had the boyfriend or do you think she was just the one beating him? I think she probably had the boyfriend. Okay, because I've I mean, heard other people say I, maybe she was the one tying him to the radiator and making up stories about having a boyfriend who was beating him. It could be. I mean... I don't, it's like, it, it, but it, the problem I think with that is like, that doesn't line up with their relationship, you know? Yeah. Because it, it's like the way it is, is like, she just seems super broken. Mm -hmm. And it's like, she doesn't seem like she's the like primary abuser, you know? And it's yeah. like, if that was the case, then that would, it's like abusive types, like don't really stop, you know? And it's like, even if he's living with her when he's, you know, in his, you know, 30s or 40s or however old he's supposed to be in the movie, they, she would still be doing that. And so to me, it seems like there was a boyfriend and then, you know, whatever happened there happened and, you know, they got away from him. And I was excited to see Francis Conroy, too, who I like from American Horror Story. That's who the uh... mom was. I haven't seen that show. Really? Yeah, I've heard Some good, of them are good. But... The first yeah. one is really good. The yeah. Haunted House one. Yeah, I think I've I feel like I've seen a few episodes. And the here Asylum one is really freaky. I don't know. Um, I'll scope it out. Yeah. Uh, when you go to movies in the theater, because yeah. it's something that I feel like happens only in the theater, and you walk out, do you feel like you're looking around and you're in a different world? Because no one else has this, but I do. <laughs> And I want to meet someone else who has this or knows what I'm talking about. So, I mean, sometimes if it's if it has like enough of an impact on me, like, I mean, weirdly, that um, if the I, movie Under the Silver Lake, I felt like that after a while. I didn't that. see that, but I've heard of it. I loved it, and like yeah. a bunch of people hate it, but I thought it was amazing. Really, I'll check yeah. that out. Yeah, it's. I think it's great. I mean, you might hate it. I have no idea, but I felt like that when I left that because mm. it was just. It's like you it saw just that in the theaters? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was like for like the, you know, one week it played out here. It was kind of, I think they dumped it, which is sort of an, sort of unfortunate, but what are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. It's like this thing where it's like, well, I felt that way after I saw Joker and I was just like, I just felt weird in the world. Yeah. For a couple. I mean, especially <laughs> after seeing the Joker. Yeah. For, for sure. hours. I mean, yeah. into the next day. Yeah. I felt different. But, like, sometimes I'll see, like, a spy movie. Yeah. And then I'll just be, like, kind of walking around the theater, like, a little, like, like, like I'm stealthy. on a mission. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's bizarre. And no, everyone's like, no, I don't have that. No, I mean, I I, I do occasionally, like, uh, where it'll just, like, put you in the mood of the movie, you know. But yeah. But it's not that often. You Like, you, a lot of the times it's like I go and see something and then just kind of forget about it. Well, let's see what kind of recommended questions I got. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, curious. so was the Nightmare board game, and that one came from me, <laughs> <laughs> was that inspiration for the movie? Oh, for Beyond the Gates? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was like a pretty much a complete what it was, rip off okay. of it. I mean, it was like, I, I wanted it to be kind of, 
like the the problem with the nightmare board game is it's just very laughable. Did I think. you have it growing up? No. So Steve, my co-writer, had it. But I mean, I was familiar with it. And then so once we started writing it, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember it like we, you know, got into it and I did my due diligence and researched all these like there was, you know, there's like four, technically five of those nightmare games. And they have like, you know, Baron Samade is and is the host in one of them. And they have kind of like an Elizabeth Bathory type and in, in one of them. And it's like a whole deal. But I was like, if this was like a game made in the 80s, like the throwback of that would probably be like a, you know, like a Mario Baba type, like Black Sunday movie, like um, with Barbara Steele. And so the idea was like, okay, what if there was like a Barbara Steele type hosting this VCR board game? And that was like, that that was kind of, it was like those two things were like the main sort of inspiration for it. And is there, so I'm trying to think of like the best way to say this. They don't play the game for very long. I mean, was they, that a choice to have like more of the relationship story between a little bit, the yeah. brothers and yeah. I mean, well, the main thing is like those movies that I I really loved. Like that's how they were structured. Okay, you know, it's like they would have like a little bit of that, and then a lot of their kind of like interpersonal dynamics. Like if you, if you watch Friday the Thirteenth Part Two or something, even though like a decent number of people get killed in that, there's a lot of like you know, them kind of talking about their plans for the future and just, you know, it's like the the kind of like just, you know, them, their personalities like merging together or meshing or whatever. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's like I wanted to kind of keep it as close to those movies that I loved as possible without like being derivative of them, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And so like my feeling on it was like there there's this movie called the gate that i'm a huge fan of and i was like what if this happened with like adults who have you know like this guy had like a drinking problem and this dude couldn't keep a job and like she you know came from like an abusive relationship and you know these sort of like real adult problems you have like what would that look like i knew how these? she hurt her wrist yeah well you know. <laughs> <laughs> we've all been there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um but yeah it's um I don't know if that answered it or not. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, well, it, it I guess be... it's also like then if the game was to be longer, what are you going to put? Yeah. And it's, it, I think it's always like, I don't know how to articulate this, but it's like, I feel like there's a point where you can do too much of that and then you just lose people. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, I want it to be like special when it happens, you know, like when they were playing it you i know? loved the element of the key being hid in the body part uh, yeah <laughs> can i reveal that yeah I of mean, course <laughs> also i didn't understand if you can actually tell me when the cop comes in yeah and sees the video yeah and he's like he doesn't see anything on it no he's like okay you guys are very good joke and walks out yeah what was that about well, it's basically like so he did doesn't. So he knew what? Did he know what it was, or he no, didn't see it? He didn't see it. Oh, and I must so, have missed that. Yeah. Okay, I'm so sorry. That's no, it's fine. Because I, mean, I was like, wait, what happened? Yeah. So it's basically like once you're playing the game, it, like it's only happening with you. And yeah. If you bring an outside person into it, that can have like a detrimental effect on them, but they're not going to know what's going on. Okay. And so that that was the. That was the psychology behind that. The stabbing on the head was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my god, that was like I, I like shivered. Yeah, that's always a that's always a good one. <laughs> and the stomach one. What do you use for that? What do people uh, use like for special effects? Like when it gets like effects? ripped out the of his guts, guts. The guy in the bar. Um. So Josh and Sierra, my makeup effects people, did that. But I mean, they basically it's like you have kind of like a blood cannon that you do but it i mean it's it's like a complicated like apparatus that you pull out and then you like press this thing and then you know i mean it's like it's it's cut around and in, in a way where you know it seems like that's kind of happening in like one you know fluid yes. motion but it's it's not it's yeah like there's a lot of like i can see that with like the stabbing yeah, yeah which yeah. is fun yeah absolutely but i mean it's there's a lot of like intricacies with that that um 
you know, it, it, it's what it, are it's the just, guts? Reveal the guts, what the guts are. I, honestly, you would have to talk to them. You, you don't know. know? Absolutely not. No, I mean, it's like I, I mean, it's, you know, silicon and these other things that they make. When they were of, pulling but... it, I was like, stop. No, <laughs> no. It's like you always have to be reminded how long intestines are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. You ever yeah. notice that? Yeah, like... absolutely. I just like. uh <laughs> I love the gore. <laughs> I love, it's just like. I'm glad. I don't know. Like for some reason, like when, when it starts getting bloody in a movie, it's like a different, like you unlock the different level of the video game. Yeah. Totally. You're like, oh, it's on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I love violence as much as the it's next like person, a, of course. But It's like know. the movie starts in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. I. It's just, I always liked in movies when you'd have these like big moments that were kind of saved a little bit later you mm-hmm. know where it's like there's a lot of horror movies where it's like they just open with like you know someone getting killed and then da 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 and it, to me it's like always a little bit better when you're you're kind of anticipating it and then when it comes in it can hopefully shock you it just feels a lot more rewarding to me yeah because then I wonder if there's also the pressure to like outdo the kill from previous kill a, a little like, bit. Like, is I there, mean, like, a thing, like, are, are they just going to die? Or, like, does it have to be a bigger death? Than, do, I almost mean, I like think how a sketch, like, how it gets, like, increasingly crazier. Yeah. I mean, it, it, to, it if there's it, the same sort of rule. I think it's always, like, you want to find a different way to do it each time. Yeah. And it's maybe not, like, a bigger way, but it's, like, a more... You're like, what angle can we come at this? Because I hadn't seen aren't... the head before. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I wish I could Ugh. say I invented that, but unfortunately, Ugh. I did not. But yeah, that it's... was gnarly. Yeah, it's it's savage. It's... <laughs> I think I might even said okay out loud or something. Um, I'll take it. So then, were, was beyond the gates a combination of those? You said you'd like something to do with the gates, and then now I've heard uh, the this gate beyond. and. Well, I mean, that we, we based it, it was there's a movie called The Beyond that Lucio Fulci directed and The Gate. And then there's also a movie called The Gates of Hell. But it was like kind of a we just kind of like lifted the title from the three of those and just put them together. And I was like, oh, this sounds like the name of like an Italian movie I would like. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. The ma- uh the brother with the glasses mm-hmm. reminded me and looked like this guy I had a crush on in high school who I was like in love with. Oh really? I'll, I'll That's let him all. Know you said that. Oh, is that your friend? <laughs> 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 oh well, Indeed. he was also in your short. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the other guy was just like that hot guy yeah, from the, like that time. The sexy brother or whatever. And like the whole yeah the whole tone. <laughs> I like how it, yeah it felt like an eighties tone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, how do you, like, besides, I guess, the lighting and, like, how do you accomplish, because you did it very well. Oh, thanks. But, I don't, yeah, what is it that makes it, like, feel, or, like, accomplish, how do you, like, accomplish that specific tone so well? I mean, there's so many things with just, like, the, you know, the sets you use, the, you know, how people are dressed, like the performances. Cause one of the big things like Barbara Crampton, you know, who is the host of the VCR board game, she really wanted to go and watch like the nightmare or board game and see how the host did it. And mm-hmm. I, I like forbade her to do from doing that because I was like, if you watch this, you're going to, this is going to become a joke because you're going to see how this guy does it. And it's like really over the top and ludicrous. So the stuff I directed her to watch was like, you know, there's um, uh, this movie called Black Narcissus and there's this nun character in there who kind of like snaps and loses her mind. And she's just very like menacing and evil. And I wanted her to be kind of like snake like and venomous in a way. And so, you know, directing something like that is how, you kind of pull that off. Whereas it's like you could have those same lines. And if she's giving the wrong kind of performance, it's going to be a really goofy effect, you know? And mm-hmm. so a lot of it is just kind of like massaging the, you know, the, the actors performances. And it, I mean, for the most part, it's like everyone really like, and cause you didn't want it, it to be that satirical. Yeah, kind exactly. Of. Yeah. It's like, I, I didn't want it to be, I didn't want them to like treat it as a joke. You yeah. Know? And so, 
that's like a big thing I've found with a lot of the 80s movies I've loved, like Poltergeist and, you know, The Gate and all of this is like there there's like real, you know, human emotion in it. Mm-hmm. And they're not just like making fun of the situation. Did you find yourself ever being scared or laughing a lot? While we were shooting? Yeah. Um, I mean, I remember being really stressed out mm-hmm. for, for like... A lot of it. Um, but, I mean, there were parts that I, I had, like, a lot of fun. How we long shooting. did it take? At the total shoot, all, all all in, was, like, 22 days, I think. But some of those were just, like, we did, you know, we did pickups with Barbara to just have some extra stuff with her on the, the TV. And She's um, so hot. I know. <laughs> she's, like, 60 years old. She Isn't looks so good. Yeah. She's, like, she's, like, a vampire or something. It's really insane. Yeah. I've had so many people come up and be like, Barbara Crampton looks so good. She looks and, so good. Yeah. She's like in her 60s. It's incredible. Wow. I um, wonder what she does. I think she exercises a lot. Damn. I've been to the gym in a minute. <laughs> um. Okay. Let's get to some of our ghost co-host questions. All right. Lay them, <laughs> lay them on me. Um, okay, we know where the video store is. Uh, do you think we're losing something going all digital and streaming? And what oh. do you think is better about physical media and digging for stuff and taking risks on movies without knowing? That's a great question. Yeah, I mean, there's kind of like a there's kind of like a ritual aspect of like going to even to like, you know, amoeba or something and like selecting a movie and like taking it to the counter and buying it and going home and unwrapping it and putting it in your player. Yes. That when you're just scrolling through streaming and you're like watch five minutes of something and it doesn't really grab your attention and you switch it over. It's like, there's not much, there's not much like importance in streaming versus like, you're like, I selected this movie and now I'm going to like see it through to the end. And yes, you know, like I never it. thought about that. Yeah. That's it's such a good point. Yeah. And it's like, I don't think the physical thing is going to go away entirely, but I, I think it's probably going to be a little more specialized, like, you know, records now where people like the hardcore fans will have that. And I think, you know, a lot of other people will just watch it on, you know, Netflix or um, Amazon Prime or Hulu. or. So obviously you have a VHS. Uh, you know, I have some tapes. I actually don't have a VCR right now, which I'm ashamed Awkward. to say. Yeah, I know. I I need to pick one up. My last one broke, and I've, I've not replaced it. So. so do you watch a lot of stuff on DVD? Yeah, I watch a lot of stuff on Blu-ray, but a lot of the a lot of the stuff that I had on VHS is, like, on Blu-ray now, and so I'll just watch it that way. Or I'll see it in, like, at, like in the theater at, like, a repertory screening. Do you think it looks a little different? Yes. Right? And sometimes... I like that older vibe. Sometimes, yeah. It's like the vibe of Leprechaun. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's this movie, Blood Rage, that I love. And watching it, I still have my VHS of it. But watching it on VHS is so much better than watching the, like, pristine Blu-ray. Because it's, like, you see too much of it. And, like, this other copy was, like, all, like, fuzzy and just weird and you felt like you did when you were like walking into the porn section yeah and it's creepier to pop in the horror film yeah and you're just like horror film yeah take a shot every time i say horror film (laughs) but yeah you get a feel like there's just like an icky feeling with vhs that you don't really get with like you know this like pristine it's exciting yeah absolutely like you're gonna get in trouble for watching it um, <laughs> you seem to really like 80s horror movies. What do you think 80s horror movies do better that we're missing today? What do you think they did better that we're missing today? I mean, you know, practical gore effects is a big one. It's, I mean, like that's coming back a little bit, but it's like you'd have just such amazing stuff in the 80s from like Screaming Mad George or like, I don't know if you've seen Society, but like the end of that is incredible like i remember seeing that i'm like this is like the most disgusting ending i've ever seen in any wow okay that got that has to be on the list for me yeah and it's like this combination i think yeah screaming mad george did the effects for that and you know this other guy steve johnson who like he created slimer and he did you know the effects in return of the living dead and a bunch of other stuff um 
he's like another just total genius. He did like the um you've have you seen Nightmare on Elm Street four? So he did this like giant <laughs> Freddy in it, and there's like he has like a chest of souls, but there's like real people like coming out of it. Ugh. And so but it's like shot in a way where it just seems like it's like normal Freddy, but there's like actual people coming that out of it. That reminds me of like, the people under insane. the stairs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's that like, was freaky. Yeah, absolutely. I that saw that was my... at <laughs> New Beverly. Oh wait, when? I um, have... it like at, I think so at like two p.m. on a Monday. Oh, like, like really recently? Oh, yeah, so you saw it like wanted... a couple like weeks ago? No, I saw it when I was a kid. I meant I saw but, yeah, that I mean, it was on the schedule screening. and I wanted to go. No, oh, I didn't go. Well, I saw well, I rented well, it well, when well, I was a kid, or I saw oh, it on. I see. It was on TV a lot too. Oh, okay. it was always on TV during the same like back to back with nothing but trouble oh yeah 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 there I were a like lot of those always... like those like basic cable classics of that i love that shit yeah like that um has one of my favorite lines in it which is may they burn in hell Ooh. they always like the the couple and that always says that and i say it constantly and no one ever gets what i'm referencing that's like I just my think i'm like a psycho one of us yeah totally. <laughs> exactly yeah uh why horror next question why i mean kind of the same deal of just like you get that charge from it that you you know you don't necessarily in like an action movie or a drama or that kind of thing or it's just like you get a lot of like high emotions in it which i i'm a big fan of in cinema did anything bad or traumatic happen to you in life to shape <laughs> your taste this way? That's a very Todd question. I mean, <laughs> yeah, uh, plenty. <laughs> like that's a, uh, it's kind of like a never-ending uh, series <laughs> of, of horrible things. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. It's a lot of that was like kind of my own doing. If that's I don't know if that really answers it, but yeah, I had, you know, I mean, I got like kicked out of my school, uh, cause for? I was drinking and that kind of thing. And yeah. I, like just being a, a big whoop. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just being an animal basically like, yeah, I, I, you know, were you doing drugs too? Not as much. I was more like mainly into drinking, but I like broke into people's houses. And... You hurt someone's wrist? No, I never did that. You weren't that. I scared. actually, I, I hurt myself a lot. Like yeah. I would like fall down a flight of stairs on purpose, and, like, like the jackass nose. thing. No, it was more just like I just oh. got really drunk, and then I would like wake up and I'd be like bloody and have no idea what happened to me. Like I never. <laughs> this isn't working. <laughs> yeah, no, but that, no, I was like, I need to do more of this. Like that, totally. I'm not doing enough of it. Was the the thing? But yeah, I never, I never got like. I, like I didn't get in any fights with anyone or anything. So, very so, shockingly, because I'm sure I was like a complete asshole and probably should have had the shit beat out. <laughs> if of you me, got but... in a fight with someone at the bar, you would just punch yourself in the face. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's like what I would. I, it was almost always like whatever like terrible thing I could do to myself would be the the way to go. You know. What are you truly afraid of in life? What scares you? Wow. What are your fears? I don't know. I guess like someone. Sure you do. Someone like being in my house <laughs> maybe or like just I, I think like being spied on is really scary and like a, huh. a way, you know, like where it's like you don't know where someone's just like watching, you know, like that shit's really scary. Yeah. Like just being like pursued by someone and like not feeling safe or, you know, in like a public place. Have you and, ever been? Yeah, of course. You, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what happened? Oh God, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I want to go into the. Okay, the person's probably going to be. Listening You've been to stalked. This. Yeah. By a sure. girl. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. Too cool. Well, it was not so cool. <laughs> really? And what ended up? Okay. Yeah, I don't, I'll I'll tell you off air, but yeah, it was. I mean, it's uh, it's not fun. Wow, I don't think I've had the pleasure of that. <laughs> yeah, you don't want it. It's like. You just get to like leave your house and be like, I really would be fucking terrible if I like run into this person somewhere. And then you would, and it'll be like dun dun. Yeah, I'm like I'm like getting uncomfortable. Oh, okay, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we'll move on. Um, I'm like I think they're probably gonna listen to this. She's literally out the window. No, it, it's I... a possibility. 
Yeah. Do you look? Do you ever um like look under your bed or behind the shower curtain when you come home after no. like doing something scary? Mm-hmm. Just no. me. No. I mean, I've and look in the closet. Sometimes I'll like turn the lights on if I just feel weird, you know. Yeah. But generally, like I can walk through like pitch dark in my apartment and not really be worried about it. I have night vision. Oh, really? <laughs> Pretty <laughs> so you much. Eat a lot of carrots or something. No, but okay. I can see. I don't know. I can see like everything in the dark. Um, that's good. I'm I mean, always you... afraid from seeing Chucky too when he cuts <laughs> the guy's ankle at military oh, camp. God. No, no, no. Or that's whatever the third military one. school it is. I thought well, it was wait, 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 was it under the stairs? No. He, okay, it's so when he goes to the military school. That's the third one. It is? Yeah. Because huh. the second one. What's the second one? Is he's in the basement. I think he cuts the guy's ankle when he's like going down the stairs. Oh, like that sounds familiar too. Or something is. Okay. When Garrett Graham is doing it. But in the third. The third one when he's at the military school under the bed and he just takes like the like razor kind of knife and he's like on the oh, tendon. Yeah. Oh, God. I, oh, God, that scene so... has never left me. And I always think something is going to be under my bed, and I don't like it when the covers aren't covering my feet at night. Oh yeah, I'm I'm the same way. Like I still need <laughs> like I don't know why. It's like I need like my neck covered. And, yeah. Like, my feet. And like, sometimes I'll be so hot, but I'll be scared. I'll yeah. get scared at night, and I just do not want my feet exposed. Yeah, I don't know what it. It's like you feel like some ghostly apparition is gonna like grab you or something. Yes. It's really sometimes that's horrible. I scare the shit out of myself and I just won't <laughs> even get up to go to the bathroom and I'll just stay in the covers and I'll be so afraid. And I'm just like, if I don't open my eyes, I can't see anything. Yeah, totally. <laughs> like I I had like almost every night when I was a little kid like that. Where I was just I mean, I, from I like a certain do. age where I was when, like When was the last was, time like, you felt like that? Um not in a really long time. I, I don't I don't know if I've had that in adulthood. I mean, maybe I have, and I'm just, like, not remembering it. But it was always, like, I think from, like, 8 to, like, 11, maybe, where I'd just be like, oh, God, I have to, like, go back to bed. Or, like, I just have to, like, not open my eyes. Like, I'd be just scared shitless. So you're trying to tell me <laughs> 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 clowns don't freak you out. I mean... Not like it really. I I don't know why. Like it just what? doesn't. It like I'm Pennywise when I was little. Like the Tim the Curry band? one. Oh, no. no, not not the band, but the <laughs> the Tim Curry version of Pennywise the clown was very scary to me. But it's like it kind of I don't know. It like doesn't bother me as much now. I think it's just because I'm so familiar with like clown iconography. Do you ever think a spider is going to crawl out of a drain? Remember that scene? Oh yeah. Well, you know what was crazy? I was <laughs> <No>. showering <sighs> and like a lizard like what? fucking came out. Like this like How? tiny lizard. So a gecko. Uh, no, no. no, it was like a little like baby lizard. Of it your was... apartment? Yeah, it was That's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. And What'd it was you do? Like... Did you kill it? Um, I tried to trap it and then it, it died. Yeah, I was like, I was trying to like release it. And... That's, and you saw it come out? Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, it was really scary. We're almost through. Oh, yeah. Keep... Do you believe in ghosts, aliens, or women? That wasn't anyway. my question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's just I'm, a dumb I'm, one. I'm, I'm not going to answer the last part of that. Ghosts, yes. <laughs> um, aliens. I didn't make that up. That's that's such a Todd question. Okay. Uh, aliens? I don't know. I mean, probably. I don't know if they kind like, of a fun idea. I mean, there's definitely like other life forms in the universe because that's that would just be insane. It's like the universe is gigantic, and we've like just not even, you know, uncovered anything from it, but. Yeah, so aliens for sure. I don't know if they visited here. I think it'd be cool if they did, but who knows? What keeps you up at night? Um, usually just like regrets, you know. Yeah, regrets. <laughs> yeah, where I'm like, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Oh, really? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. shame from the past. Yeah, of course. Oh, me too. That's such I know. a big thing. Yeah, where it's like, I remember this like awkward thing I did five years ago. Okay. I'm like, I'm like, oh man, 
I know. And then it's like that person's never thought about it. Ever. Again. Like they're, never they're not will. even gonna remember it. Yeah, and it's like I'll remember it on my deathbed. Yeah. I'll be like, I'm thinking about that stupid thing I said in like twenty thirteen. Like What are your sleeping hours? Um, I sleep from like probably midnight to like six or seven AM. That's pretty early. Yeah. I would I mean sometimes like one but yeah I, I generally like wake up pretty early what do like, you do when you wake up like in the morning yeah uh, i don't, don't know <laughs> i don't know like i yes, you know you get breakfast and stuff and like go write somewhere or, yeah so do you write every day yes yeah and i mean i'm doing i do a lot of like producerial stuff which is really time consuming yeah but um the yeah, I, I I've written every day for years. So, are you working on anything right now, or? Yeah, I've got like I have two assignment jobs. One of them, one of them's just like a rewrite for some you know random company, and then the other is like a project I'm rewriting that I'd be directing next year. Oh, cool. Yeah, so that's that's exciting. But um, and then I have like my own stuff that I'm working on. Yeah. So, good times. What do you think is wrong with horror movies today and what would make them better? <laughs> oh, my God. It's really, uh, this, <laughs> these are such Todd Lincoln questions. Uh, would you believe I, me if they were mine? I mean. They're not. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I can, I can, I, you're, you're much nicer than I <laughs> um, I mean, there's a lot of there's great horror movies made every there's there's bad horror movies made every year and there's great horror movies made every year. It's like you can go, you know, back to the you know, the twenties and thirties and find good and bad stuff for each of those years and so on. It's just I think there was like a higher concentration of like cooler horror movies during a certain period in the eighties and now I think because like the volume has gone up so much, it's like maybe the good ones are a little harder to find, but yeah, I think it's, I think there's a lot of exciting stuff going on now where people who, you know, couldn't necessarily make a movie, wouldn't have been able to make a movie like 10 or 15 years ago now can. And, yeah. you know, there's, there's good and bad aspects to that. So that was, what was the process like for you making yours? Um, as for, well, it so, I mean, it was basically like I started writing it with uh, Steve Scarlatta, who is my co-writer. We we met and then, you know, we were talking about this idea and then I wanted to like immediately start writing on it because I just love the idea of like a VTR board game that led to another dimension and all this other stuff. And so we started outlining it. And then during that process, I was like going and approaching different investors and like rich people I knew and then just putting as much money together as possible and before you were finished writing it yeah I mean like we were and it's still... your first feature yeah and so... so I basically like learned how to finance that movie like off of that movie where I was just like okay I'm just gonna like get you know 10 grand from this guy or like 25 grand from this this lady or you know like 50 grand over here and then you, you know, put all that together and, you know, if you do that over like 10 or 15 people, you've got enough to make a movie, basically. So you did all the financing yeah. on your own. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then and then you're like, OK, cool. Like, let's do it. Like, I have friends who. Well, it was like a lot of planning. Like, I know a sound guy. I know not. No, I mean, it was it was more like it, it, did it was Did you work really... with like another production no, so okay. well, a little bit. There, were, there was a company that like loaned us some equipment, okay, and some of some of that stuff, but they didn't really have anything to do with like the actual, like we used their insurance and some other stuff. But um, it was more like you know I had my DP that I liked working with, and then the actors that I wanted, who you know m only like it, it was like until it got like really close to happening, um. Like, no one was really committed to it until it was, like, maybe, you know, like, Like, yeah, I guess. A, yeah, like, it was, like, You're a like, month and a half. Like, you still cool to, like, meet next month and yeah, do this thing? Yeah, it was, like, a month and a half <laughs> away from shooting. I'm, like, yo, this is, like, really happening. And then they were, they were, like, okay, cool. You know, and then everyone 
came aboard, but it was all like they were all actors that I liked from you know specific yeah. projects like Graham, the guy with the glasses. I really liked him in My the high animated school crush. The musical. Yeah, your high school crush. He was he played Herbert West and <laughs> in, in Reanimator, and he was great. Um, and then Chase, I really liked, and John dies at the end, and um, Jesse Merlin, I was like a huge fan of, but. Um, yeah, I mean, it was it was just like I just kind of like cherry picked all these actors that I liked from mm -hmm. indie genre movies, and you know, and then just got the crew that I wanted and that I trusted, and you know, then like basically like every location in that I went and like talked to the owner and like haggled a deal with them. Yeah, like none of like there was like no location. A lot of favors. I mean, it was more like. Like the house we found in that, the house that I found in that, I literally like looked at three thousand locations online. Really? Yeah. Trying wow. To, couldn't find anywhere, mm -hmm. and then eventually I was like, I want a house that's like the one in the people under the stairs neighborhood. Serious, like no bullshit. And I was like, okay, that's in the West Adams district. I'm like, I'm just gonna go and like knock on people's <gasps> doors, and I knocked on like three or four doors and then I saw the house that we shot and I was like that's the house and I just like knew it instantly so what do you do when you knock on their door so I just went up and I was like look um I'm shooting a movie you know I love your house I'd like to shoot here this is how much I can pay you like what do you think and how much like, do you have to pay people a day for their house I mean it kind of it depends I don't remember what it okay. was but I mean it wasn't a lot you know I mean it was like maybe like 500 a day or, so, or uh, like yeah. you know i mean very very little i mean a lot of those places it's like they get like five grand a day yeah like but they a, don't have to know that in west adams no but i mean <laughs> and it's also too it's like a lot of them actually like could use that money yeah you know? and so they're like okay sure you know like they'll, they'll were they like it. where do i go when you're shooting um they didn't they were like there the whole time and uh, it was it, like, like upstairs yeah was that weird were they like, no, sorry, they I'm just like, like coming downstairs little... to use the bathroom? I mean, they were <laughs> like, we coordinated with them. Like, I had a good AD on it. And then he, you know, he handled that as well as he could. But yeah, I mean, it was like, it was real stressful. Do you find when you're writing and you have an idea, you're like so fucking excited about it? And then it kind of dies. If you take a couple of days off or like, even like if a week goes by, you'll not be as excited as you were. And you're like, I don't get what happened. So you're like, I have to work on this every single day to keep my excitement going. Um, I, I mean, I, I've definitely had that with stuff that I'm Come not, on, you know what that, I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. I mean, it's like there's certain <laughs> things where I'm like, oh my God, this is a great idea. And then like a few days ago, I'm like, actually, that idea kind of sucks. Isn't that weird? What <laughs> yeah. is that? I, I don't know. Like I mean- I've had a I've I've had a few of those where I'm like this is it like this is the one and then you know you start on that and you're like actually I don't really care about that this. happens to me all the fucking time yeah yeah I mean I've... like I'll be waiting for like a good idea and then I'll be like oh and then I'll be like S like just like high like I've like that high feeling like yeah. like literally high and then. Like, uh, you know, and then I'll like outline it or something. And then a couple of days will go by and I'm like, oh, I should get to work on that. Yeah. I mean, it's. um, I don't know what it is. It, it's like. It, it usually seems like whatever the one you're most excited about for the longest period of time is the one you should do. Yeah. Like the one that like keeps bothering you is the is the way to go mm -hmm. no matter what anyone else says, because that's always like. I've just heard so many like weird it, like I have a a new thing I'm working on that I'm super jazzed about, but it's like I've had people be like, "Oh my god, I love this. This is mm -hmm. great," and then other people be like, "I can't believe you would write this." this and then is... it's like, "Well, I'm not talking to you again. Fuck off." Well, I mean, it, but it's the weird thing is, is like a lot of times people will see the finished product and then they'll like it, but it's yeah. like. I don't know. It's what hard it for is. people to see things in your head. Yeah, exactly. So you're like, I shouldn't even be telling my mom. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's not. You yeah. Know? I mean, it's, it's. It'll just be like some. Sometimes people are like, oh, I see what you're going for, and a lot of times they don't. And I'll be so excited about something, and then I'll tell my dad, and he'll be like, I don't like it. And you I'm should like, just not tell your dad. I know. I know. But see, I I had to like, I, I had to learn a lot of those where I'm like, okay, if this person's like, 
always just gonna like shit on whatever your chat yeah. about. Like just don't tell them. Yeah. You or know? people will be really interested and they're like, Oh, I wanna know and then you'll tell them and then they like won't really say anything and it's like Oh really? It's just one person who I think is jealous of me, to be honest. Fuck. Well then don't don't tell them. I know. I mean that's, I know. I've learned that. It's like yeah. hardware store for milk kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you just I think it's like you, you get a few of those, but there's always like little tells you get with people that like kind of give you like a real sense of like how they feel about you. And uh-huh. like you have to you have to follow those. Yeah. Is what I've learned. Like any of those oh, like kind of like micro expressions or whatever. Like, like when I first got here and I said, We're talking about the horror world and then no, your no, face no, no. was like, Why am I here? No, I just I <laughs> thought I thought it was charming. Like I, I actually like I'm that. genuine. Yeah, absolutely. Do you no, see I, that? I thought I thought it was like I thought it was refreshingly authentic God. that you were just were like upfront and honest about that. I'm just trying to do my best here. I I'm like trying it. to learn. I'm into movies. Yeah. I I'm look, I'm a hundred percent for that. Okay. I I will never like guilt you or shame you for like what you have or mm-hmm. not seen. Like I think Thank that's you. always Why do I feel embarrassed? Do you ever get that about anything? I'm to do with <laughs> Yeah, pretty frequently. <laughs> do you ever get embarrassed? No, I meant with movies. Because there's no. something embarrassing to me about not knowing everything about movies. I have that thing. Yeah, but I mean, it's not. There's so many, obviously. Yeah, I mean, it's like there's a million. You I know? know. I mean, and it's like you're never going to go. There's never going to be a point in your life where you've seen every movie. Yeah. You know, and it's like everyone, I don't care who they are, they have blind spots, you know. And it's like there's okay. certain things some people haven't seen and others have, All you right. know. So, <laughs> yeah, don't. What embarrasses you now that we're here? Um... Todd Lincoln. <laughs> That's his his questions. Okay, then That's... last question. <laughs> last question. What's oh, what are good starter training wheel horror movies for the and I didn't understand this part. For the uninitiated. Um, and ask him the best super advanced obscure horror films for the initiated. And then I was like, what the fuck is the initiated? I mean, First of all, will you explain <laughs> to me what the initiated is? <laughs> I, I I'm not sure I know either, but <laughs> I think it's like maybe the like the really deep cuts for people who've seen a lot of the you know the poltergeist. I'm and... uninitiated. It's fair to say. So I would say if I had to pick like five like must see horror movies that I'm I'm a fan of, I would say uh, The Gate, um, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Phantasm One. Um, Maybe Friday the Thirteenth Part Five. That's that's a pretty cool one. And then I don't know Halloween too. We'll just pick those. Uh, um, and, and probably the Changeling. That's an amazing movie. But um, and for the initiated, for like the real deep cut ones, I would say you know Edge of the Axe is a great movie. That's pretty obscure. It's like a Spanish slasher that was shot in Big Bear. Um, there's one called Body Count that Ruggiero Diodato yeah. did. It was like from 87, I think, and Mimsy Farmer and David Hess are in that really obscure movie. Very hard to find. Um, what else? Uh, I think, yeah, Blood Rage, although a lot of people know about that, and I, I think that's on Amazon right now, so that's not as much of a deep cut. Um, like, Don't Go in the Woods is one. It's like, Ooh, okay. <laughs> it's real. I want to know what's in there now. Yeah, I mean, it's like a, it's a pretty bad movie, but it's also very entertaining. Um, real deep cuts. Um, there's one called Madhouse that's really good. That's about like a like a this twin sister. <gasps> it's like real, real, really well done. I think it was a it was like an Italian director. Um, but it was shot in like. I think it was shot in New Orleans. Um, well worth checking out. And Beyond the Door. That's it. What do you think is the scariest movie you've ever seen? Um, like, have you ever been like, I can't watch this? Well, I mean, the scariest experience, but this is not the scariest movie I've ever seen, was, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street 4 when I was eight. Because it was just, <laughs> yeah. like, 
mind shearing. Have you terrible. watched it when you're older? Oh yeah. A and bunch then of times. Were, was it still as scary? Or were no, you like I was an eight year old watching? Yeah, this yeah. Movie? It's like you're like. Oh, but I you remember eight. the emotion. Yeah. And that's like the things that's important with memory Absolutely. about things. You rem- you remember the way you felt about something, For not sure. it, yeah. Yeah. No, I remember that stuff, but I I mean scariest. Maybe like. I don't know. Like, it, I mean, it'll probably be something like the, you know, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like the original. Yeah. Because that was just, like, I remember that movie just felt so relentless and, like, punishing. The, like, the whole, where you're just, like, I remember just being like, oh, my God, like, this movie, like, just will not fucking let up. Like, yeah. it just was so, like, there's no, like, break in that movie. Like, uh-huh. you're just, like, being put through, like, a fucking meat grinder. Yeah, I mean, it's, like, past the kind of, like, halfway point when she gets captured and then she, like, escapes and then they recapture her. You're just, like, oh, Like, my let God. her jump in the truck. You're well, It's, like, it reaches this point where they're just, like, tormenting her so much where you're, like, you're just, like, oh, God, just, like, put her out of her misery. Yeah. <laughs> you're, like, this is, like, horrible, like, what they're doing to her. And then she just breaks out and it's, like, I mean, it's just like a being inside a nightmare watching mm. that movie, and I, I I don't know if I've ever had quite the same experience I have like watching that. Do you read the reviews or watch these like YouTube videos of people talking about the stuff you've made? Um, sometimes. I mean, it's like a little a, a little bit here and there. It's like I've read some good stuff and bad stuff, and it's but it's all it's always like. It's always kind of like uh, it's like the truth is sort of like in between both of them. You Does know, it where affect it's like, you like some of the negative stuff? <laughs> no, not at all. Or I mean, I've, like, I've heard like fucking nerd. Oh, I've I've heard so much like like real negative stuff in my life. <laughs> like that was yeah. like way way meaner than anything anyone could write on the internet. That yeah, that was like it's like that shit just doesn't even register. But I mean, it's it's. It's, like, interesting to see why someone likes or doesn't like it, but ultimately, like, I don't really care that much. It, it Like, it's yeah. cool if they do. And, and honestly, either way, if they're talking about it, like, I'm thrilled, even if it's, even if it, it's, if it's positive or negative, it's, like, it's still getting out there as, like, I think so, a victory, too, yeah. You know? It's, like, the worst is when it just comes out and then nothing. You know? It's, like, no one says anything about it. Then, like, that's... Or, like, the kind of, like, tepid uh, endorsement is also very bad, where it's like, oh, it's good. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Like, where it's just, like, they're just so, like, indifferent about it. Yeah. I'd rather it be, like, they they love it and say, like, it's the best movie of the year or be, like, this is the worst movie I've ever seen. You know? It's like, (laughs) I I want, like, like, those extremes are fun. Yeah. So So tomorrow is Halloween. Oh yeah. What you, really? <laughs> what are you gonna do? Um, I don't know. I don't think I have any plans. I mean, it's always like Halloween is in my heart, you know. Wow. So it's it's like it's year round for me, but usually there's like a lot of Halloween build up before the actual day. Yeah. You know, and so I feel like once it finally rolls around out here, you're kind of like, oh, it's the actual day now. I went to the haunted hayride and I went and I walked through some of the mazes. Oh yeah. And honestly, like some of them were pretty fun. Yeah, I feel like that's I feel like I'd enjoy that one. I've never gone to it though, for whatever you, reason. What I hate is walking through like the kind of mazes where it's like a a backyard with a bunch of lines of clothes hanging down and you have to walk. I don't like walking through stuff. Because you never, oh, you know, yeah. that's the worst. The stuff, yeah, because you're like, the... this thing's like draped over and, and it, you have to like push through it. That's someone like scary. yells at you and yeah, there's like, Bleh! <laughs> yeah, that's not not my cup of tea. Well, Jackson, cool name, by the way. Oh, thank you. Cool parents. You have a, uh, you, well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I guess so. <laughs> they're not, uh, they're not bad. Um, you have a cool name. You have a great Chelsea? last name, Skidmore. You think so? Skidmore Thank is a great you, last name. Thank you, because you know I got made fun of. What? <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Really? No. Thank you. No, I didn't I really it get it that name. much, to be honest. But sometimes when I'm go, or there was one time I was going on stage, and I'm walking up stage, and they call my name, you know, stand up, yeah. and uh, and I hear this table of like women being like 
skid mark. And I'm like, excuse me, you fucking bitch. <laughs> Did you assault them? I think I said something. Oh, that's And cool. everyone was just quiet. And I was like, anyways, moving on. <laughs> What did you say to him? I can't remember. It was a oh, couple okay. years ago. I was like, oh, you're making my fun of my name? Yeah, Skidmark, you fucking bitch. And then I have a joke <laughs> about it. They don't really do that much anymore. Yeah. Because it's to do with school shootings and everyone's so <laughs> sensitive. <laughs> but yeah. Probably shouldn't laugh at that. No, it's okay. It's, it was just comedy. Um, Are you a social media person? A, yeah, a little bit. Where I, do we find you? Uh, I'm on Instagram at Mr. Jackson Stewart. And I have a Facebook, but I keep that I, private i don't really use it that much cool twitter anything else you want to no, throw twitter. out there check out beyond the gates and where can we watch it hulu hulu or you can buy the blu-ray from uh, shout factory awesome well thank you so much for coming on and thank you guys for listening please remember to subscribe rate and review on itunes thanks bye thank you